All right, we all go through hardship, but hardship, I believe, can improve you as a person, especially if you allow it to improve you rather than allow it to deteriorate you and complain and moan and whine. So today we're going to be talking about this tweet, which is what is the hardest lesson you ever learned? And Kirby and I are going to share our our uh, hardest lessons. I've got two that are a little bit different, but I would like to see uh, what is what is your hardest lesson, Kirby? Um, this is the hardest lesson I had to learn. And then I think people will resonate with this is people will not show up to help you and not get anything out of it. So what I mean by that is, you know, back in my day, Alex, you know, you see the infomercials, you know, telling people, you know, hey, how to get out of situations and things like that. Usually they, you know, want you to buy their course or something. Usually 99% of the time, the information don't work. Um, another one, solicitors that come to your door, they swear they have the best product scheme, whatever. Uh, solar panels, they got this, they got lawn service and this, and they come with the, under the guise of, hey, we're here to help you. And then after you, you know, purchase their product, you realize you just got screwed over. What I realized that people are not coming to help you and they're not getting nothing out of it. Let's use, for example, YouTube videos. These content creators, they have a passion for the subject matters that they that they have, but they're sharing this information. Yes, the information will help you for some parts of it. You know, some people that's just out here just making, you know, they just making videos just for the hell of it. But for the people that's trying to pass along information, they're passing along information, our channel included. Yes, the information will help you, but there's another aspect of it. There's a monetization side to YouTube. So let's, Let's all be real here. If nobody on YouTube made a penny, would you have all the content that you have here? The answer is no. And in life, everybody, people that come to you and say that they can help you without, you know, being asked, provoked or anything like that, they're not there to help you. They're there to get an incentive out of it. I mean, especially solicitors is the main one. I mean, I think I need a sign on my door to say, don't come here unless you're gonna to subscribe to the YouTube channel. That's what, because I'm I'm gonna put them to task every time, but they're not here to help. And you see it all the time. You see these people that come with the uh, insurance products or they come with the financial advisement products and all that other crap. For the majority of the part, the reason why they're doing it is to sell you something so they can monetize off of your ignorance. And then if you don't use the information, then it really feel like you got duped. And I see it all the time with people saying, oh, this guy came and this solar panels is a big one now in Florida. And I said, you're getting screwed every time. And I always say this and then I'll wrap it up. These people that do the door-to-door -door sales of solar panels, they're making commissions, especially the good ones. They're making six figures in commissions a year. So just think, if you're buying a solar panel, and they're telling you how much you're not going to pay and how much money you're going to save. How do the company have money left over to pay these people hundreds of thousands of dollars in sales commission? It's because you are the sucker. You are the product that's being used and they're monetizing off of you. So start paying attention instead of just believing that, oh, there's an angel came from heaven to come help out me. That's not what happened. You're getting screwed most of the time. Alex, what you got? I wish people would see that one more too, because a lot of these, like a lot of the lessons I've learned too, are especially that one, but that wasn't one on my list. But these are lessons that we as a society are taught the complete opposite. Like we are taught that people help with good intention. And there may be a select few less than 1% of the world that does that. But the majority of people, even if it's your friend's business, even if it's 
your best friend, your your brother's business who's got this to help you out. They're looking to profit off of you in some way or another. They're looking to get something out of you. And a lot of people can't see that because they think that they strictly are there to help you. And it's just not true. People are looking to make a profit. People aren't wasting their time with you to help you for free. Even in the worst situations, in the in the absolute worst situations. I would argue they're probably even looking to profit off of you more if they know you're in an absolute worst situation. But Hello? the two lessons I had, um, one is, I would say, a life lesson. And then the, the second one is like in entrepreneurship or in investing the investment one i would say is the hardest lesson i had was being more creative like thinking more using my brain more because rather than just thinking that oh you got to go buy the book on things but i've learned that that's not necessarily true with anything. You can just be creative with anything. And if you are creative with anything, then you can realize how much easier it is to solve those problems than thinking that there's just one problem or one answer to the problem. So opening my mind more and try to figure out different solutions and ways to solve problems. And I would think that that, that has been a stressful one too. That's why I would say it was the hardest was like, when you hit a blocking stone and you don't know where to go from there and you're trying to navigate that, that, that has uh, been a hard lesson for me, but has been one that has improved my uh, investment portfolio or improved me. Um, another one is similar to yours is um, people whether it's friends, whether it's family, whether it's strangers, people don't want it. And I'm just speaking to those that are like focused and entrepreneurs. People don't want it as bad as you want it. Like you would think that people, everyone wants to be a millionaire. Everyone wants to have success. But the reality is they have a ton of excuses. They don't want to take action. They're afraid to take risk. They're lazy. There's so many things that people are just comfortable with their lives and they don't want to take that step to go ahead and do it. And they'd rather talk rather than take action. That has been a hard one for me too, because I thought everyone was like, if I gave them, if I opened the door and said, look, look what's over here, they would just jump right through. But that's, that's not true. People do not want to take, uh, take the first step. Yeah, and uh, I'll break these down. Uh, I'll take the each one a step further. Um, understanding, you know, the key to being able to understand the nuances of business is first understanding the framework of the business. And a lot of people, a lot of people don't get stuff done. And you always see people get hit with fraud cases because they weren't set up right and all that other stuff. It's because they didn't learn the rules first. Learn the framework, learn the rules first. And then now that you know the rules, now you can find ways to still get to the objective within the rules. Like we always talk about in real estate and you be like, well, it's this. I thought it's like this. But yeah, you can do that. So, you know, that's the, that's the bare minimum. Now try to flip it to do this. Now flip it to do that. So that's the thing. But the key is you got to know the, the rules first. Most people don't want to learn the rules and they just want to manipulate. That's why you always see people getting hit with high tax bills and stuff like that. Oh, I thought because I was in real estate, I didn't have to pay tax. No, you got to do it. You can't just go out buying Lamborghinis just for the hell of it and do always a tax right now. No, that's not how it works. You know, you can't you can't be up at uh, Macy's every day buying clothes talking about, oh, these are uniforms for the business. No, you can't do that. You have to operate in the framework. You can push it all the way to the end of the framework. But you got to operate in the framework. Once you understand the framework, then you can be able to maneuver within that framework to make things happen. And then on the, on the second one is everybody, and this is my belief, everybody wants to be a millionaire. I mean, some people going to lie because they say, no, I don't want that kind of money. It's because they don't ever believe it's going to get there. But everybody wants to be a man. Everybody wants to be successful. Everybody want to have money at the end of the month so they can do things like vacation, go shopping, travel, whatever. 
the problem is, is people don't want to go through the gambit. They don't want to go through the work to get there. You know, everybody, you know, everybody's their own person. They want to do all the stuff that they want to do. I mean, if you got a friend or a family member who's just making it month to month, they don't want to disturb that life because they're saying, oh, well, I got to do something else. I mean, you see it all the time where you see people, they work their nine to five job and then you tell them like, hey, you need to look at this so you find a way to build more money. They're like, well, I just work. Just feel like work. I don't want to do no more work. You know, so they won't look at, you know, YouTube channels. They won't look at videos. They won't read a book to do anything extra because they figure I just gave up eight hours of my day. I want to do what I want to do. And what they want to do 99% of the time has nothing to do with improving themselves in a financial basis. That's just human nature. They want it, but they just don't want to go. They don't want to do the work. I mean, like E.T., Eric Thomas, he say, and I got the, I got it on my wall. When you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, that's when you will be successful. Most people don't. Most people don't want to succeed that bad. They just want it. They want the lottery ticket. That's why people play the lottery because they just want to do the bare minimum to get the max result. And they'll keep doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it until they get the max result because they don't want to go through the work. And then they wake up when it's 65 and then you'll start seeing, especially now that you're getting older. And you had conversations with people in, when you was, you know, 18, 19, 20. They, those people did nothing. You're going to hit, you know, 30 and then those people are going to be in the same or worse conditions they was when they was in 20. And the only thing they're going to say, oh man, I wish I, I wish I would have listened. But when they're in their 30s, they're still not going to listen to you because they think, because the only thing they want, they want to, okay, if I start now at 30, I want to be where you're at tomorrow. And that's not possible. How about get to half where I'm at in my lifetime, if you know, if you get on this goal, but people don't want that. They just want the instant gratification of the result. They just want the end result. They don't want to run the race. They just want to start at the start line and then somebody cheat and put them in the taxi cab and get them to the finish line. They don't want to run that marathon. They don't want to be at mile 18, cramping up sore, ready to quit and keep pushing on. They don't want that in their life. And that's what I believe the problem is. With all that being said, guys, hit the like button. If you like the video, leave a comment down below, share this video, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.